Oos, what's up? Face Sensei here. So Jake versus Gib did not go as planned. I'm gonna give you my thoughts based off training with him and then watching the fight and just my reaction and what I was surprised with and just my feelings about the fight and what I think tactically went wrong. But before that, my boy Faze Jasper released some new hoodies, white hoodies, relentless effort hoodies, super clean. I actually love the hoodie. I have a black one and the hoodie is just a different style, a different feel from all the other hoodies I have. When we were younger, everything was different. It was a time where risk taking meant sliding down the tall slide, where your imagination reached as far as the stories your mom would read out to you. It was a time where taking a leap of faith meant taking off the training wheels of your bike and trusting your ability to ride it without falling. But now, risk taking means understanding consequences and taking a leap of faith requires confidence. I wasn't really made for school or working a 9 to 5. I realized that I'd rather do something creative and have more freedom. So in 2015, with 11 bucks in my bank account, I took the biggest leap of faith in my life. I decided to quit school and create the life I've always wanted for myself. Now, dreams no longer meant bedtime and imagination didn't just come from bedtime stories. It was all real life. So with nothing but an idea, 11 bucks to play with, and a shit ton of confidence, I just took the risk and allowed the unexpected to happen. Okay, so quick rewind. I had sparred uh, Gib, I think, uh, 10 days out um, from his fight with Jake. Now, um, in sparring, I know a lot of you talking about, oh, um, why didn't he spar like he did, or why didn't he fight like he sparred with me, etc. The thing is, when I went in there, I didn't really know how good Gib was going to be, number one. Number two, I'm not going in there to try to knock out Gib. I mean, I'm there to give him some hard punches, give him a good look, and do the best that I can. Um, I wasn't in great shape, as you already know, if you watched my video already, it gives you a good idea where my head was at and where physically I was at in terms of cardio, so I knew I had to take quite a bit of the rounds off to make sure I'm not just, you know, punch drunk in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Now, if you saw me and Gib speak after our sparring, um, he wanted some feedback. The only thing was, and Gib, obviously, Leon saw this, that he would just walk into um, some shots, some punches that were unnecessary. Now clearly he took them in the sparring match, but you can see that they rattled him a bit or they froze him a little bit, but he was able to fight through it. Now in sparring, all the time I know you guys hear no head guards, 10 ounce gloves. It's not so much the gloves. The gloves make a big, big difference, but it's no head guards. When you don't have a head guard on, it takes away so much padding. It's like having another glove. So obviously 10 ounce and 16 ounce is a four ounce difference, but the headgear takes, I don't know how many ounces the headgear is, but it's like taking away 16 or another 20 ounces, right? It, it takes away the that much padding. So it's like a double of gloves. So no, if we were to spar with 16 ounce gloves, but with no headgear, you would see a big difference too in the impact, especially when you have good headgear. So when you combine that with the 10 ounce gloves, that's what really makes a difference. And you can just take shots and sparring um, that you just can't take in a fight. Also, when you're a pressure fighter, um, you're gonna feel the punches differently. I mean, you saw that he got knocked back on the jab. Um, clearly, Jake is, is bigger and he's heavier and it, he has more natural power, but not just that. Um, like when you see me take punches in that sparring or even Jake's taking a punch, if you're moving back, you're going with the force of the punch, you can still get knocked out, clearly but it's not the same as moving into it. You can't really roll with the punch, right? You can't ride the punch back. You just can't do that. And when you're moving forward into it, you're colliding. And a lot of knockouts happen, um, whether it's MMA or boxing or even any other sport, um, you know, basketball, football, especially American football, is when there's a collision because the impact is just so great. So even if Gibb wasn't running into a shot, if Jake is leaning into his punch and Gibb is leaning forward and, just, and his weight's forward even a little bit, you're going to have a collision and it's just going to, the impact is just going to be so great. So that was the one thing I was concerned with is that, you know, if you run into a punch and it's the same thing I was concerned with, with JJ and Logan is that if you run into something, um, you're just going to, it's going to be dangerous. Now, what surprised me the most was Jake. Everyone's been saying, you know, Gibb, they're making a meme about him ducking and obviously he was a little too uh, squared off. I think so when he hit, got hit, it was kind of moving straight back. He didn't have his base, but 
he was avoiding a lot of punches. If you go back and watch the footage and watch the highlights, he, you know, slipped and rolled and ducked under a lot of punches. Jake was missing his jab, he was missing his cross. His head movement wasn't, you know, bad, but like Vidal said, that he wasn't throwing any punches. So, you know, I always tell my students too, or people that I'm training, even myself, you can only avoid so many punches, right? It, you're eventually, if the person keeps punching and you're not, eventually you're gonna get, you're gonna get hit, right? You can only avoid so much. You only want to avoid as, as much as you need so that you can get in there and you know do your damage and then get back out, right? Or do something or stay in there and clinch or whatever it may be. But you don't want to just you know avoid the punch and, and get used to you know falling in love with your defense. You only see guys like Floyd Mayweather who can do that, who can just like sit in the pocket in his shell and just avoid you know a, a 20 punch combination or at least ride most of the punches a lot of the greats like joe frazier or um you know mike tyson any inside fighters you know they moved in quickly did their punching combinations but they were heavy on their punches to keep the other guy busy so we can't tee off on you but again that's it was the you know we're talking about the first minute or two of the fight so it's not like Gib wasn't going to do that we didn't get to see really Gib uh showcase his strengths jake was the one that impressed me to be honest, I told a lot of people, this is the Jake that I imagined that I would see that um, when he fought Deji. I was surprised with Jake when he fought Deji, and I thought he would be better. I thought he'd punch a little bit harder. I was just surprised with his lack of punching power. And I just think it was more of the nerves. Um, he was backing up a lot and just kind of pushing with his punches. But in, in this fight, I thought he looked really fast uh, with his hands, and he was leaning into his punches. If you saw his right hand, he was really committing um, into that right hand. And if you want to beat someone like Gibb, that's what you have to do. You have to be accurate and you have to, you can't hesitate. Um, and you gotta put your weight behind your punches so that you can slow him down or get into run into something and you know, and land a knockout. I was more uh, saddened and disappointed that I didn't get a chance to see Gib, you know, try to use his strengths. This was a fight that I thought that it was gonna be Jake early and then Gib late. And I think most people saw it that way. Gib just had to survive the, the early rounds to, to slow Jake down because you know, a power puncher is most dangerous early in the fight because they got their energy, they got their wind and everything, and they got the, their maximum power is in the beginning of the fight. If he was able to survive that, even if he got knocked down once or twice, but get into the later rounds, <coughs> the fourth, fifth, sixth round, um, then, it, you know, it would give give his best chance. It was not going to be early, ever forget. With, impressed with Jake that he took advantage of the opportunity. A lot of times, if you saw with Logan and JJ, um, when they would get inside and JJ would be attacking, Logan just went on the defensive. Now, again, really quick to go back on, Logan had a different mentality. I know he said the first round decapitation, but if you remember, he did say since he was, you know, the sneezing three times, he was gonna take the first couple rounds off. And that was the worst mentality, because I think his best chance was to try to hit JJ hard early and demand some respect and try to land something clean like the uppercut early. You know, that would have been his best chance, like similar to give. But Logan seemed tentative, and um, the difference is that JJ clearly threatened Logan with knockout power, right? He landed a knockdown. I'm not sure that Jake felt like Gibb was gonna be able to hurt him. Maybe he felt like he could have won on points if he, was, if he was more active. So I don't think he was, you know, he didn't have to deal with that variable, I think, like, you know, the one punch knockout power that JJ possesses. So Jake just had to go out there and make sure he, you know, was accurate and didn't hesitate and put his weight behind his punches and he did exactly that. He had a very good check hook and he had a good uh, stiff jab and a good straight right hand. I mean, those three things, be able to fight backwards and he punched with power. I just personally thought that, you know, he was gonna move a lot and he was gonna maybe land some Sachin Gibbs. I thought Gibb, I thought Gibb was gonna get a little beat up in this fight. I thought he was gonna take quite a bit of damage, you know, maybe a broken nose or a cut or even, but I thought that if he doesn't go down, that his heart is gonna carry him into the later rounds and then he's gonna have a chance um, to really swing those last three rounds. But I was just surprised that uh, Jake was really putting his weight behind his punches. You know, he was snapping some velocity behind those things. All in all, I mean, it was, um, if you're a Jake fan, obviously you're excited, but I was just disappointed because I wanted to see Jake get tested in that sense. He wasn't tested that much with the fight with Deji. That was a bit underwhelming. And I wanted to see, again, Jake get pushed and get challenged there in that sense. And then I wanted to see um, Gibb you know, see if he can deal with that punch and power. And I wanted to see his heart. I wanted to get a chance to see his heart and that I that I saw during sparring and that I was hearing about. I just want to get a chance to witness that, you know, because that would have been like a, a Rocky movie. I think that we were just kind of robbed of that exciting, regardless of how the outcome would have been in the end, 
the, I think the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds would have been so exciting. That's the way boxing goes, you know, you get hit, you get caught, and Jake did his thing, he got in there and got out. That's the way, you know, if I were to fight Gib, that's what I would have done. If I was gonna fight him, I would not want to get into the later rounds. I gotta try to put him on his butt early and hurt him and try to, you know, knock him out because I don't want him to get into those later rounds. Now we saw JJ and Jake. Now I wanna see this fight again. I don't really if JJ doesn't want to do it, I don't care. I don't I know that he said he wants to do it. Um, I think these guys are crazy for fighting. Um, and this is coming from someone who's experienced fighting. I to put yourself in that kind of um, danger zone is just mind boggling to me. I've done it, you know, I enjoy the sport. Um, that's the part that I hate the most is trying to protect the brain. So I think these guys are nuts, but that's just my personal opinion. I will always watch it though, because it is so exciting and we love the violence and the risk factor. But the reason I want to see this is because Jake has yet to face a lot of challenges in his matchups, right? He's been the bigger guy, um, the naturally heavier guy, um, the more athletic guy, the faster guy, and the guy who hits harder in both of these matchups. And I'm not saying that he's not capable of fighting someone, but you want to see someone like this get challenged. You know, JJ was fighting Joe Weller, and at the beginning it seemed like, well, Joe is, you know, the better athlete, but JJ turned himself into the better athlete, he had great cardio, and you can tell that he had more natural power. But then he went and fought Logan, you know, and he fought him twice, someone that he's not, he's not a bigger guy. Logan's much bigger, he had longer reach, um, you can saw by the punch machine, but hit harder. A better natural athlete, right? Had the athletic background, etc. And we saw JJ have the draw. He fought the first fight on the outside, trying to be technical, had a lot of trouble early, and was able to fight with, you know, heart and tenacity and make it a dog fight and got the tie. Then came back, you know, landed a knockdown early that wasn't counted, but then Logan dropped him. And obviously the illegal blows, but he had to de weather that storm, and we saw him come back and win the later rounds while weathering that storm. So we've seen JJ be tested by a bigger athlete. So, I mean, I, we've seen everything from JJ in terms of him being challenged. I, we haven't seen Jake be challenged yet. So I'll be interested to see how he fights against someone like JJ who clearly threatens the knockout. He threatens the one punch knockout. I personally don't care about all the beef and all this extra stuff. Um, I just think that it would make a great fight. Right now, I'm enjoying my time off, not focusing on, on a fight coming up. I'm enjoying training. I want to get my blue belt in jiu-jitsu this year I, um, and trying to improve my cardio. So if I go to spar somebody in camp, I'm not out of shape. That's a big part for me. I'm playing something for football again. Um, so I'm getting ready for the season coming up. I've been focusing on the dojo. So I'm, I'm excited for all that. And if a fight opportunity comes up and it makes sense, um, then I'll do it. If it doesn't make sense, um, then I won't. So that's pretty much where I'm taking it. And this fight stuff with YouTubers is still going on. So I'm looking forward to training with other YouTubers and just staying involved in any way that I can. I actually did some training at American Top Team um, with Phil Deru, the strength and conditioning coach. And just want like a straight up athlete coach over there, fixes everything. So I'm looking to get involved um, with some of their camps. You want to do Jacek, um, Jordan Mas Masvidal, Dustin Poirier, there's a whole bunch of fighters out of there and just any camp that I can get involved in, in the, in the martial arts world, in the combat sports world, I'm looking to do. I'm not looking to you know pursue a professional career, but any way that I can involve myself in terms of training and improve myself as a martial artist, but also maybe you know bring you guys and my fans into the fight world, you know doing vlogs or a day in the life of these professional fighters is to see what their training is like. I'm really excited about that opportunity for this year. I've had some talks with some people, and that looks like it may happen. So I'm super excited and focused on that right now. You should expect to see a lot of sparring um, with either YouTubers and training with YouTubers, but also sparring and training with some legitimate professional UFC fighters and fighters from any professional organization, uh, boxing, kickboxing, and even jiu-jitsu. I'm just looking to challenge myself and improve as a martial artist and share that with you guys. That is the dream. Thank you for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe, and you'll see me soon. Oops.